hi and welcome back to the channel guys and girls now today we're going to do what I call a long-term review obviously in my eyes I don't feel like I've had this bike five seconds but I've actually clocked just over 1200 miles and believe it or not you know by the time of filming this it, it's been about four and a half months so by the time you view it it'll be over five months so um yeah how, how quick's that gone you know like this bike's a toy for me so you know i don't ride it every day but i've still clocked up a hell of a lot of miles yet this is the third first time in three weeks since i did those flyby shots i've actually ridden this bike you know so when i do go out on this bike i do tend to go out for fairly big rides you know so as i've said before i do like going out with a couple of mates and making a bit of a day of it and things like that so yeah it's a uh, bit of an odd one really it's uh i can't believe how how, how quick it's gone having this bike so what we're going to do in a minute we're going to uh i'm going to pull over and we're going to talk about the bike from the front wheel to the back wheel and go through what i like what i don't like what i would change or what i'm thinking of changing and literally go from you know running costs to absolutely everything we'll just give it a good in-depth review um for anybody who's interested in going out and buying a speed twin whether it's this uh, 2019 version even though mine's registered in 2021 but mine's i got a good deal mine's on the tw uh, 2020 model say or the new 2021 which has a few differences but nothing major really it's more euro 5 update uh, as you know, if, if suspension, front suspension has been slightly changed, uh, the brakes have changed, the colour schemes have changed, um, the inertia of the engine, blah blah blah, but it's, it's, it's basically not that much different in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is we'll uh, go through, like I said, everything from top to bottom, we'll walk around the bike and do it, so I'll try and do it in an order of going around the bike so we don't actually miss anything. All right. Um, as a, a buyer, you know, these sort of reviews were brilliant for me. Um, and I'm a short rider, so I can talk about how I feel and fit on the bike a bit as well. Um, I've seen quite a few comments of people receiving their new 2020 model bikes and going, oh, it's a bit too tall for me on the, on the forums. Um, so yeah we'll go through a bit of everything uh we'll try and uh, pull over hopefully uh up the road where well, i usually take a few photos occasionally if it's uh, the gates are open at the castle but if not we'll uh, try and pull over in the gateway hopefully it's quiet enough to uh do a run through video all right guys see you in a second in youtube world here we do we'll do it here i'll say it's closed today but yeah it's hampton castle beautiful place it's the gateway so should be quiet enough here so yeah we'll do the video uh we'll do it on the phone i think we'll do the old mist and the flyer thing all right so let's uh do it on that right there's the beauty yourself so what can we say like i said we'll go from the front to the back so here we go. So first things, let's talk about brakes, shall we? Or should we talk about tires? Tires are probably nearer than brakes. What do you reckon? Definitely tires. Yeah, obviously the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Freeze. They've been absolutely fine, to be honest. Um, like I said, done twelve hundred miles. God, you can see I haven't used it for a while. But it's um, yeah, they're they're wearing quite nicely. And um, nice and warm. Obviously it's about 20 degrees up today, which is good. But yeah, they've um, been fine. You may have seen some of the videos where I've actually ridden it in heavy monsoon rain. Uh, no issues. No wiggles. Um, you know, I'm not a particularly fast rider, but I do push it occasionally. And I haven't been put off yet. I, I think the lowest temperatures have been about seven or eight degrees so I've ridden it in so I haven't ridden it in extremely cold 
However, they've given me no reason concern that the tyres are pants, basically. So uh, I know a lot of people swap them out and say they're night and day, you know, say the Michelin Road 5s, which I do like and I probably would put on after this. But yeah, a lot of people say they've switched out straight away. I have had no issues at the moment. And um, so I will wear them until they, they need replacing, to be honest. So Diablo Rosso Pirellis, all right at the moment, and I'm not even a Pirelli fan. <laughs> uh, brakes. Yeah, Brembo brakes. Yeah, they're quite nice brakes. I uh, haven't had any issues with them. Obviously, the new model comes with the Metzler tyres, by the way, the new model does. Extra sticky. Um, so I'm sure you'll have more grip on the new one. They're just not going to last five seconds. Um, you'll probably get three, three and a half if you're good. 1500 if you're not <laughs> but uh, yeah they've updated the brakes Brembo's on the new one as well to uh, is it Stylema Brembo's? I can't remember now anyway obviously these have got Brembo's uh, with braided lines uh, really good no issues with them I did get the slight squeak at, uh, early on o only briefly but it wasn't it's, it's gone away obviously use it enough it, it, it will obviously uh, so yeah brakes spot on that's one of the things i liked on my review video when i actually test rode the bike um and yeah still good so no problems with that when i got the bike all the uh, cables and stuff with the uh ties were all messed up so uh, but yeah i found the found some of the clips they're all lodged up and stuff so yeah sorted that out and uh, what was next to talk to you about the front end bike? Suspension. Obviously, that's one of the changes they've done on the new 2021 model. I prefer this traditional, traditional um, suspension look. They've got, they've got those upside down forks, haven't they, on the new one? Uh, nothing against that. I just prefer, and why I bought the retro classic bike was because of that. Each their own. I'm sure it's a bit of an upgrade, but for all my riding, tractor. For all my riding. It's been absolutely fine, it's not bottomed out, it's not, you know, I'm about, probably about 12 stone with all my kit on and stuff. Um, absolutely been absolutely fine. Obviously it's non-adjustable as we know. Um, but yeah, I've not had any problems with that and I prefer the agricultural look as some comments have been made about it. Um, so yeah, so if you're on the fence or do you want to go new or do you want to get a bargain on a used one like I did? Well not a used one, mine wasn't used, but uh, a late registered one of the older model then yeah have a go but yeah it's absolutely fine for me uh, what else uh, radiator guard that was the first mod I actually put on this bike if you remember um, yeah if you look at all the flies and all the all the thing it's it's been it's been well battered already in those uh, sort of 1200 odd miles so it was definitely worth the investment. Definitely get one of them fitted, even if it's aftermarket with a nice union jack or whatever. Just, yeah, definitely get one of them because otherwise you're, you're asking for trouble. Uh, tank. Yeah, beautiful. Um, no blemishes, no nothing. I do do a magnetic tank bag on the odd occasion. I do tend to put it on the back more because I like looking at the tank, hence why I pay for have the better colour. Um, I prefer the colours of the old ones to the new ones. I think they're just classier with the hand painted uh, uh, pinstripe. Um, I'm sure the new colours will grow on it. I, I, you know, I think if you, I was going to go for a new one now, it'd be a black one. Um, I just think the red just doesn't look as good as as this red here. Um, I would put on a tank pad um, because like, your jacket and things like this will. Um, can would would mark it, I think, because I've noticed uh, a few little marks on mine there. So it, that's definitely worth the investment. Uh, I think they'd, they'd try and for only about 34 quid in the UK. So get one off of eBay like I did. Probably try and for one and uh, happy days. So yeah, definitely do that. Um, I put the crash protection on. Uh, put the RNG on that as well. Crash protection. I put the bobbins on as well. Ooh, going too far now, aren't we? Um, Obviously, yeah, I haven't had to use them, luckily. Touch wood. Hopefully I never will. <laughs> but yeah, they're there. Um, I didn't like... It's each to their own again. I didn't quite like the... Um, what do you call it? The bars that come out. The engine dresser bars. It, it just... I've seen a few now, and yeah, I prefer these because, you know, just by looking at you, you wouldn't even know they're there, really. It's only because I'm pointing them out to you. 
um, you need to think it's a Torx 55 because you need to get it off the engine bolt there but yeah if you look at it with the tank if it drops it's not gonna hurt my lovely tank is it not the hand major tank um, so yeah that's good obviously when then exhaust yeah exhaust yeah I, I love it I haven't done x-pipe or anything like that I've literally just gone straight to uh, the British custom silencers the Predator Pros and yeah no I absolutely love them it's just about the right sound I may I may do x-pipe but if I do x-pipe it'll probably be just a winter job um, where I'm not riding the bike so much and I've got time to take it apart to be honest but I'm quite happy with the sound so I might not to be honest so um, they're absolutely spot on obviously I don't want to run them with any of the quiet cores I've got them for later on if I need them but all in all pretty good so happy with them um, nice and fast shipment and great custom service from British Customs um, where are we up to now suspension the rear yeah, well, I run it on the base preload. It's absolutely fine for me. Um, with my Daytona boots, which obviously for short riders, I can basically near enough flat foot it. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm about 12 stone. Don't find any issues with the rear suspension. I know it's people say it's a weak point, but for my style of riding, it's been absolutely fine. If I was a slightly heavier chap, I would... Um, yeah, I would increase the preload. However, as we know, the preload, which is one of my things I would feed back to Triumph, and I notice they still do it on the new one, is uh, how the hell are you meant to adjust that? Absolutely ridiculous without taking the silencer off. However, yeah, I don't need to touch it. It's been absolutely fine. Uh, the one thing else on that side? No, I don't think so. Seat. Everyone seems to complain about the seat. Not everyone, but a lot of people. I find the seat absolutely comfy. You know, I've done like 200 mile rides and I've been fine. It might just be me and my bottom, but that's a lot more comfortable than my MT-07s. Um, so yeah, and yeah, it's the most comfiest bike I've ever ridden, so I don't quite understand. Everybody's bottom's obviously different, but um, yeah, you can get the quilted ones or or you, I'd probably, if you are struggling, I'd probably just get some gel pad put in the original seat. However, yeah, I don't find it a problem. It's not uncomfortable. Like any boy, you get used to it and it, it beds in anyway. Uh, so where are we now? Obviously paddock bobbins. You know, get them chucked in. They're, you know, ideal. And I like how they've already got the mounting plates. So you don't have to put them through there or anything. Um, I've said them before. The uh, tyre valves angles are absolutely brilliant, so easy for maintenance and stuff like that. Rear tyre, yeah, like I said, plenty of, plenty of meat in there. Um, not had any, any trouble at all. Obviously you've got your riding mode, so when you ride it in the rain, you've got your rain mode. When I'm in town, slow moving traffic, I tend to use uh, rain mode. Otherwise it's road, or if I'm with my mates, it's in sport. To be honest, it's in sport one and it is in road, I must admit. Uh, but yeah, no trouble with the rear tyre either. Uh, going back to the front now. I did do the throttle spacer. It's still a little bit on off, but it is a lot better. Is it worth the I don't know, 20 to 35? They're so ranged all, so don't need these uh, throttle spacers. Is, is it really worth it? I'd say it probably is. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not too bad, but it's it still hasn't solved it. Um, but yeah, if you're using rain and slow moving, or just feather the clutch, it's absolutely fine. So don't worry about that. And yeah, obviously I've done the tail tidy, um, and that looks a lot better, a lot lot better. Obviously the video will be online about that now and how I installed it. It's nice and easy, so you know from the links and where I got it from so yeah the rear end of the bike looks a lot better I use the uh, I don't like the little dot reflector which we need in the UK so I put the uh, the original uh, Triumph one on so uh, happy days looks alright that so on this side of the bike not much different from the other <laughs> the only niggle I've had is this is quite loose compared to my other one I just have to keep pushing that in and it makes it firm but it does wiggle loose 
So when I do go for its next uh, time to drive, I will get them to uh, have a look at that. It might just be the spring needs tightening. I might look at it over winter, but yeah, occasionally I just have to push that little uh, bit in there. Um, but yeah, that's it on that side. Obviously, the uh, <sighs> heat grips, yeah. Obviously, haven't used them too much with this wet, nice weather we've been having lately, but they are definitely worthwhile having. As I've said on the heat grips uh, video, it's just more in keeping, isn't it? Uh, quad lock I installed. That is uh, a definite if you want a, like a sat nav. You can get a beeline and stuff like that, but I quite like looking at Google Maps and stuff. And since I've done the video, I actually have put the 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 extra adapter on for stability. So I noticed it was flickering a little bit, um, my phone. Not on the camera or anything, as you can see, it's working fine. But obviously it's probably a little bit more fiber than my MT-07. So I have put that on and it has solved it. Mirrors, absolutely love. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, never had bar ends before, but I would definitely do that again if I change this bike. However, I'm not changing this bike. I love this bike. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. If dials, love the dials, love the sweeping effect, things like that. Now, fuel economy. As you can see, since I filled up, you can zoom in, the reflection there, I've done 121.8 miles. And on here, I've got 63 miles to go. So it does really well on fuel. This is a mixture of riding. I don't do a lot of town riding because well, why would you want to sit in town unless you're commuting? So as you can see, I've got 197 miles and I chickened out. I, 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 it would do 200 if you really did it, but I get carried away. But yeah, if I press all the switch gear, nice and easy. Um, you know, it's so basic, you can't really go wrong. But yeah, if you press the information button, as you can see, my miles per gallon combined. Since I had the bike, so I reset when I first got it, on its, and even done a mile, and I've averaged so far, and it was miles, 64.9 miles per gallon, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, one of the other and most annoying things is the switch light uh, for the daytime running light. If you look the daytime running lights on, you always have the light there which to me should be when you've got your full beam on however when you do your switch that light goes out and then you've got your full beam on <laughs> it is just the other way around i know quite a few youtubers have mentioned it but it does amuse me especially when riding at night uh riding at night how is it absolutely fine to be honest the headlights really really bright um fantastic I've only done it a couple of times, but in fact, it's the first few rides I've ever done at night, and it wouldn't put me off if I got caught out late at night again. So, yeah, it'd be nice if it was an LED bulb on the main headlight, it's just daytime running on generally. But, uh, yeah, can't fault that. Uh, what else shall we talk about? Just general build quality. Obviously, coming from a Yamaha to this, it is night and day. It's, it's just when you wash it and stuff you just tell you can feel the quality of the bike trying to really have got it spot on and got it real spot on for this bike to be honest you know absolutely solid no no issues you know and there's a few little niggles like the side stand goes right under there so it's quite uh, hard to see and get but to be honest i'm used to it now so it's easy um so that's it in a nutshell nothing else to report but beauty of a bike you can't go wrong if you go for the new one or this older specs one they're not that much difference it's more the euro 5 than anything else uh, but yeah she's an absolute beautiful bike so what else would i do um like i said maybe maybe I put an x pipe on maybe i'm not too worried i know it reduces engine heat and things like that but to be honest, it doesn't really bother me because I don't tend to ride in town. So um, when I have, yeah, it is quite hot, but nothing to really worry about. And uh, maintenance wise on this bike, yeah, obviously I've got a paddock stand, as we said, with the paddock bobbins. Um, but yeah, if you put it on the paddock stand, you just put the wheel on. It's a bit weird it being this side. I'm used to it being the other side, but. Yeah, it's fine. You just obviously just when you do your spray and put your lube on, you just gotta make sure you try not to get it on your tires, really. 
Um, oil should not use absolutely any. So happy days. Uh, after three weeks, I had it on the trickle charge. Three weeks, obviously, just starts off. No issues there whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so that's probably it. I might get the uh, the uh, sump guard or what you call it, cat guard or. Um, I think EvoTech do a nice one, which goes all the way up to here. Or oh, I might buy the Triumph one. We'll see. I'll see if there's any eBay bargains out there at some point. But yeah, all in all, would I buy it again? Yes. Am I intending on getting rid of it anytime soon? Absolutely not. I'll probably, I'll probably keep this one for at least another three years, probably. And like I said, I haven't had it very long, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And uh, yeah. Like I said, you can't go wrong, whichever one you go for. I'll stop blubbering on now. I think this video's gone long enough. Um, and, yeah, if you'd like to like and subscribe, I hope this has been as of use to you. Because um, I know when I was looking, these sort of videos were brilliant. Um, so, yeah, just go just go do it. Honestly, you, you can't go wrong. You'll love it. Like I said, we've been a short rider. I'm five foot four, five foot five on a good day, I always say. Uh, but with my Daytona boots on... I can I can almost flat foot this, so it's no trouble if you have the right uh, right gear on with this bike. It's not too heavy. It's easy to move around the garage. And yeah, jobs are good. And anyway, guys, thank you very much. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.